haven't met you before, I'm Mindy Tate, Executive Director for Franklin Tomorrow, and we are so happy you are here this morning. We also have Stacy Cox, our Operations Director, in the back, and a number of our board members are here also, so we appreciate you being here. We could not present Frank Talks without our great, oh, skipped one, sorry. Okay, well, I'll do it this way. That will work, maybe. Uh, we could not do this without our great sponsors, Vanderbilt University Office of Community, Neighborhood, and Government Relations, and Renaissance Bank. And uh, uh, Lynn Maddox is here from Vanderbilt, representing Vanderbilt. We appreciate her being here. And we have Harrison Crabtree and Diane LeBlanc from Renaissance Bank. So thank you all for being our presenting partners this year. Frank Talks is always held on the second Monday of the month, and yes, I know it's a holiday for some of you bankers, so uh, some bankers, and I do appreciate that they're here, and, I, and some lawyers and some others, and he's got to get back to the golf course soon, I think. Uh, I'm not, not sure about that, so uh, we are, are really glad that you all are, are here and joining us, but it's always the second Monday of the month, but at various locations across the community. Uh, we go to West Haven, we're in downtown Franklin, different locations, and we're always looking for locations that can hold up to 100 people where we can have these across the community. That's what we're trying to do is generate conversation, and I'm going to turn it over right now to Nancy Conway, who's going to present on Did You Know? A little question, a fun fact related to Franklin's past. Thank you, Mandy. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. All right. This is a did you know quiz. It's a simple question about something that took place in our local community. So, you know, I'll ask you the question and let's see who can answer it first. And if not, maybe I'll have to give you, you know, a clue or something. But something happened in 1999 that was really a major event in Franklin and Williamson County. The opening of this facility started contributing greatly to the economic stability of our community. <laughs> what took place in 1999? I know none of you were born then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? No. Oh, I was wrong. Is it the, the convention? I'm sorry, the county conference center at the You are correct. Woohoo! That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Simple. Okay, that's Brooke yeah. from Homepage Media. To give you a little more information, uh, the Cool Springs Conference Center opened. The city of Franklin and Williamson County government split the $12 million cost, uh, the construction cost. And they worked in tandem with Atlanta-based developer Stormont Trice and the hotel and the resort management corporation that constructed the $30 million Cool Springs Marriott adjacent to the conference center. Now, Brooke probably knew this because you've got some, excuse me, uh, current news going on regarding the conference center, right? Yeah. But anyway, thank you, Brooke. Congratulations. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mary Lee Bennett, and I'm the marketing manager for West Haven. I feel a little multi-personality today. <laughs> As you can see, I also have a Franklin Local shirt on. Um, I have a Franklin Tomorrow badge on. I have a Franklin Ambassador pin. And I also have a Franklin Storyteller pin. How many people have one of those? <laughs> I am so cool. <laughs> I'm just going to take a minute this morning to talk about On the Table. How many of you are signed up for On the Table? Oh, good, good, because we want to get everybody signed up for On the Table. What is On the Table? Can I? How about this? Here you go. 
<laughs> so on the table is a one-day community engagement initiative where we're going to have uh, opportunities all around Franklin for people to come together to have a one-hour conversation and share some food and talk about what's important to them about Franklin. And I'm really excited about this. We just did a mock table last week and it was a group from Franklin Tomorrow that did it but the conversation that we had was awesome and we really talked about some really good things that we think are important in our community. These tables will be 8 to 12 people and we found that that was about as big as it needed to be so everybody can be heard and everybody has an opportunity to express their opinion about what we're talking about. So again, I would just like to invite everyone, if you don't want to host a table, please be part of the conversation. Our kickoff for, uh, on the table is going to be at the next breakfast with the mayors, and that's October the 30th, starting at 7 a.m. for all the early birds in the room at Rolling Hills Community Church, and we invite everyone to come to that and be part of the conversations there. Um, then all across the city will be, spot, will be opportunities for you to join conversations. There'll be some at the Y, there'll be some at the library, there'll be some out at West Haven and other places around town. So if you're interested in participating, and again, I'm going to keep saying it, I encourage everyone to be part, um, go to our website, franklintomorrow.org, backslash on the table. You can sign up to host a table. You can sign up to participate in a conversation, and you can sign up for um, training if you're a host, because we will help everyone through that process. There are cards in front of you on the table, <laughs> on the table, <laughs> you see what I did there, <laughs> that give you all the information you need, so we hope that you'll join us. Um, I'd like to introduce Ellie Chen, who is the CEO and president of the Frank Visit Franklin Visitor and Convention Bureau, and she's going to lead our panel this morning. Great. But you don't need that, do you? I don't, but we're going to hand that down to the, we're going to give it to the panel. Great. Thank you, Mary Lee. There you go, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for coming out and joining us today. Um, Mindy, thanks for the invitation to, to be up here with this amazing panel that I work daily with. Uh, but before we get started, before I introduce the panelists, I just want to give you an overview of hospitality and where we are with some of our numbers as of the end of 2017. So in 2017, Williamson County saw 1.51 million visitors. That was an increase of 6% over 2016. We were really excited about that increase because the national increase was 2.6%. So people are really enjoying coming to Franklin and Williamson County and, and seeing what we're doing here and in, and having fun at all of our great attractions and restaurants and so forth. That created an economic impact of $452 million, which was an increase of 5.9%. And that, we employ just over 3,600 people in the industry in the county. So we have quite a few employees all over the county in hospitality. And of the 95 counties in Tennessee, we're ranked number six in visitor spending. So we're pretty strong ranking right after um, Chattanooga. So the first five are kind of what I call the, you know, Nashville's number one by far, which is great for us, and we love that Nashville's number one. Um, Memphis, the mountains, and then uh, Knoxville and Chattanooga, they usually fight over point, you know, four and five. And then what I don't have up here, because we just got the number, it's like hot off the press, um, and the number that I'm most excited about is that thanks to what visitors spend in our county, Every resident, every household in Williamson County saves $516 on their annual taxes. So what those visitors are spending here saves us money. Yay. So all of that is in this handy little card. We call it Tourism Pays. We create this card each year. We have these cards outside on the table. So if you want to take one with you, so if somebody says, oh gosh, those tourist people, they just you know, it's traffic or whatever, you could say, hey, did you know that you save $516 every year on your taxes thanks to that tourist that's coming in and spending money? So help us spread that good word. But these are out there. So you came really to hear these guys, but I just wanted to give that overview of where we are. And I'm going to introduce them individually and let them give a little bit of a their own introduction. So I'm not going to sit up here and read your, your bios, even though they're all incredible. So we're going to start with Andy Marshall who's the CEO and founder of A. Marshall Hospitality. 
And I think, Andy, why don't you do an introduction and then I think you have a video, correct? I do. Okay. So good morning. How is everyone? I feel like I'm sliding this side of the room a little bit with, with the <laughs> angle of my chair. But um, So A. Marshall Hospitality is a, um, a restaurant group. Uh, we started with uh, Puckett's Grocery and Restaurants. We now have five Puckett's Grocery and Restaurants across the state of Tennessee, mostly in the Middle Tennessee area, one in Chattanooga. And then we also have Scouts Pub, Homestead Manor, um, the Boathouse in Franklin, and our latest opening is Deacon's New South, along with two ice cream stores, Hattie Jane's Ice Cream and Columbia and Murfreesboro. And then we have a food truck and two event venues. So <laughs> we got our fingers in a lot of things uh, concerning hospitality in the industry. Obviously, Puckett's is, is kind of our, the one that uh, is driving um, our other growth areas, and it's uh, one that we're probably most interested in continuing to grow. Andy, how many employees do you have now? Well, um, as of uh, last payroll, we had uh, we were approaching 800 employees. Wow, that's great! Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, started with 10 employees in Leapers Fork, and three of them were family. So <laughs> we've come a long way. <laughs> great. And so, can we? I'm not sure who's rolling video, but can we roll the video? No, you're not it. Okay. Yeah. Everybody say no, not me. Not me, not me. Okay. Puckets, the best of all things Southern. A Southern community kitchen. The best in live picking. You're part of the family at Puckets. That's beautiful. So the, the latest aspect of our hospitality is uh, we've gotten into concessions. So we're now in Bridgestone. We've been in there three years now. We're now in the Titan Stadium with our trolley. We're at Vanderbilt Stadium, NTSU Stadium, and um, Chattanooga Stadium. Oh, great. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. I didn't know all the, I knew better. It, it's all happened in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Excellent. Heath, we're going to jump to you. Heath Clark is the founder of H. Clark Distillery. And um, I'm going to let you do your own introduction. But here's one of my favorite things about Heath and what he's done with the distillery. So Heath, by trade, is an attorney. I'm going to get this a little bit wrong, so feel free to correct me. Um, but he wrote the legislator, leg, legislation to be able to do distilling in our county again. And it was over 100 years that we weren't able to distill. So he wrote it, got it passed, and then opened his own distillery. And I think he's, <laughs> I think he's the only distillery, in, at least in the state, probably in the country, that is a law firm slash distillery all in the same building. So I, <laughs> I love that story. But take it from there. <laughs> did I still on your thunder? No, OK, because I love that story. Uh, <laughs> And I get asked a lot, like, how did you go from uh, practicing law to trying, you know, this your hand at distilling? And uh, I always say that it's just the, the constant quest for an honest profession. So, <laughs> 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 so uh, I'm, I'm a perpetual overcommitter. That's sort of my, uh, um, I think we have that in common. <laughs> um, and so I uh, was playing in the rotary golf scramble this morning out at Legends, and so my pants were wet. And everybody's like, why are you wearing pants? It's hot. And I was like, well, I've got to go to this, this thing. And so uh, I apologize for my wet, my wet pants. Uh, the good news is, is the team's probably doing better <laughs> since, since I'm not there. I wasn't really contributing. Um, so we have been in Thompson Station making gin and whiskey for, for a little over four years. And so um, we got started in August of 14. And it had been 104 years since there was any legal spirits made in Williamson County. And so, isn't that crazy? So, you know, Tennessee has this rich distilling tradition. Um, but we also have the very dubious distinction of being the first state to outlaw whiskey. And we've done it twice. 
Um, the first vestige of prohibition anywhere was the then Confederate government of Tennessee had to outlaw whiskey production in order to field an army during the Civil War because there were more men and resources going into the production of whiskey than there was the army. Um, <laughs> nuts. And so we did it again in 1910. So we had uh, hundreds, literally hundreds of registered distilleries, probably hundreds and hundreds of unregistered distilleries. And uh, so in 1910, we outlawed whiskey and horse racing. And so if you ask Monty McInturf, he'll tell you there were four thoroughbred racetracks between here and Nashville. We got rid of all of it. And uh, one of those just terrible years for Tennessee, um, maybe the best year in the history of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So we just gave it all to those guys. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> And I grew up near Lynchburg uh, around Jack Daniels, my uncle's uh, the engineering man manager at Jack. He's been there since 1981. Um, he's, 70, he's 71. They tried to buy him out this year, you know, early retirement. And he's like, ah, oh, no. Like, <laughs> what am I going to do, you know, if I retire? So uh, apparently, you know, getting exposed to Jack a lot early, I talked about whiskey a lot. And so I was at lunch with um, my then boss. And he told me to just stop talking about whiskey and do something about it. And that sort of led to the, the legislative efforts. And so, you know, we, we finally got open in 2014. And so we've been producing for, this is our fifth year of production. Um, our first barrel of whiskey turns four years old next week. We're excited about that. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of energy to get started. And that's great. That's good motivation. Let's go do it. Um, but then we had to really answer the questions uh, Becky and I were like, why are, we, why are we still here? We got going, we got started, great. Why are we still doing it? And uh, in thinking through what we're really trying to do, what we have been doing, it really comes down to hospitality. Uh, there's a lot of bourbon out there to drink that's pretty good. Um, so why are we different? Um, and so what we've had to do is figure out why we're there and then express it. And so I think the cultural cornerstones in Tennessee are really music, hospitality, and whiskey. And so we, we've, we've rooted our brand in, in just being very giving and being very open and welcoming. And um, we're going to keep doing it as long as y'all keep drinking it. <laughs> Great. We do that. <laughs> Thank you, Heath. So, okay. And then our last panelist, and hang with me because I got a big old long title here. Joni Cole, who's the owner of Grays on Main and Old Be Joyful. If you haven't been down to Old Be Joyful, please come down and take a look. It's absolutely beautiful, just like Grays. And she serves on the DFA Executive Committee and oversees economic vitality for the Downtown Franklin Association, which the Franklin Locals par um, Program, which you see a lot of folks here in the gray Franklin Locals shirts today, uh, was born and managed out of the Economic Vitality Committee. So. Joni, I'm going to let you take it from here to talk about Grays and Oi Be Joyful and Franklin Locals. And I think you have a video as well. You want to start with a video or? We can start. Okay. I Let's... didn't know about this video. I've got videos. <laughs> I could have brought a video. <laughs> Loved it. Couldn't ask for anything more. It's quite helpful and very useful, yeah. It's a new program uh, that we've just started in downtown Franklin, and it's called uh, Franklin Locals. Franklin Locals is basically concierge on the street. So we want to raise the level of hospitality on our streets in downtown Franklin. And we felt that this was a great need and just something that we can do as a community to help our tourists find places, um, answer any of the questions that they have, point them to the visitor center, and just be out here greeting folks. I met people from Denmark and from London and from South Africa and Canada and all over the world. So far today, uh, the furthest place away has been Michigan and Indiana. We're from Northern Ireland. We come from County Antrim. And this is a very, very good service, and we enjoyed it. So we have found that we're building relationships and that we're just being a friendly face to folks that are down here walking the streets of downtown Franklin. A lot of folks have never been here before, and they love it. It's just really, really fun, and the, the welcome of our program and that our volunteers are doing this and they're asking to sign up to participate just shows how much people love this town, that we live here, and we want to help others enjoy it like we do.
Thank you, Ellie, and thank you, the city, for making that video for us. That's amazing. We love that video. Well, let's start first by having all the Franklin locals stand up. There's a lot here. I think I counted like 12. John, stand up. You don't have your shirt on, but you can definitely stand up. We appreciate you and we thank you. Thank you so much for coming out today and supporting us and supporting downtown Franklin. Um, my name is Joni Cole. My husband and I, Michael, we own Grays on Main and OB Joyful. Uh, we started Grays on Main in 2013, renovated the building. Andy so graciously mentored and trained us. Uh, we knew nothing about the restaurant business, but we knew we just loved people. And you turn 50 and you decide, okay, we're gonna have another baby, we're gonna open a business. Well, we decided to open a business. So that's what we did. <laughs> And thanks to you guys and the city of Franklin and all of just everyone, um, we've been extremely blessed. Very, very successful, very, very blessed. We opened up OB Joyful about five months ago, and that is a 40-seat whiskey bar next door. We took over Papa Boudreaux's space which has been great. We're open for lunch and dinner. We stay open till midnight. And I really wasn't sure if downtown Franklin was going to support staying open till midnight. There's people in there every night. And Emily, Andy just shared with me the story you said the other night. Um, I'm gonna share that really quickly. When you came out at 9.30 or 10, the streets were pretty dead when you'd walk out of Gray's. Now, it's alive. People are walking the streets, and that's what we want. You know, we want people out there um, till midnight. And not after that, but till midnight. <laughs> So we, we've opened that, and it's been extremely successful, and we wish that you would come by and visit. Uh, both places are absolutely gorgeous. My husband is the one that does all the renovation. He's the creator and the idea maker, and um, I, stay, I'm, I work there every day and love on people and just have a great time. We do have another business in the horizon. Uh, we have secured the second floor above Papa Boudreaux's, and that's going to be an event space. We don't have it named yet. It's already being renovated. A uh, little bar in the front where those beautiful arch windows are, a big long table in the center with AV coming out of the center. And I found that uh, with Grays on Main for the last four years, I take about 10 people uh, of my, my staff and we go and we visit all the hotels. And I'm very, um, Ellie, we get all of her information as well. We split up into teams of two, and we make appointments with the concierge. The purpose of that is a relationship, and that's really why we're here today. The purpose is relationships. So we make relationships with these concierge. We give them goodies. We talk about Franklin, um, Gray's, OBJ, all of that. And then they come in and they see the restaurant. Through that, I have found that there's not an event space. You know, this is amazing right here. Downtown Franklin needs something like this. Uh, for that sweet spot of about 20 to 25, or really anywhere from zero to 25. Um, you have large venues without AV, and that's what Gray's can accommodate. And they want really good food, they want good alcohol, and they want AV. So we're gonna create that space, and I'm super excited about that, so keep that in your back pocket. And I'm just honored to be here, and I can talk more about Franklin Locals yeah, you when you ask questions. Yeah, you want to talk a little bit about Franklin Locals? Do you want me to? Yeah. Okay, so Franklin Locals is a program that was birthed out of um, our committee, economic vitality through the Downtown Franklin Association. I've been honored to be on that board for um, going in my sixth year and that economic vitality, what that means is a group of volunteers, a group of people that are passionate about supporting our downtown businesses. How can we make our businesses economically vital? So we need to create programs. Our first program that was of any note was the Mars Pet Care Program a uh, year and a half, two years ago, and that's Better Cities for Pets. We want to raise the level of hospitality. We want to bring, have people come down that feel comfortable about their pets. We have 95 businesses that are pet friendly. Not only are they pet friendly, they welcome pets. So that brings a lot of people to downtown Franklin if they know that they can bring their pets. So what was our next thing? Um, I felt like Christy and I both, uh, Christy Williams, she couldn't be here today. Uh, we needed a concierge on the street. You know, you walk in, you go to downtown Franklin. We're all familiar with downtown Franklin, but it can be overwhelming. We have an amazing shops, amazing restaurants, but it can be very over overwhelming. So we wanted to raise that level of hospitality. So I formed a committee with uh, the visitor center, the chamber, the city of Franklin, the uh, uh, fire department, the police department, volunteers, um, downtown Franklin Association, marketing people, twine, just anybody and everybody that I could think of that wanted to have a, a voice in creating this program. It took us about 11 months, and we are now on the streets. There's 12 of us. We've had two training classes. Uh, these folks are all volunteers. The purpose of Franklin Locals is for tourists to feel like a local. 
for us to be able to share with them about downtown Franklin. There's two parts of the training. The first part is through the Visitor Center, the Ambassador Program. You can see I've got my little pin on. And so Megan teaches them the overview of Williamson County, and that's a four-hour program. The second part of this training is three hours with my team, and we give them a notebook, and we get into the nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts of our 16 historic blocks. So we tell them specifics. We want them to be secure when people ask them questions. So they go through about three hours of that, and then they get a, you know, they purchase t-shirts, and they sign up. Uh, there's a survey, so it's very, very well done, we wanted to create a program where we can have all of our numbers and we can gather information to help the visitor center, to help us, to help our businesses downtown. So we are having a blast and I think it's been very well received and I want to thank the city for making this video for us and you guys will see us on the streets. Great. Joni, thanks for that You're overview. Welcome. And I had Dolores, I don't know where she is, she wants to know about that second part of training so make sure you find her after the program. Okay, so let's talk about visitors because, you know, that might be self-serving, but that's what we do. So why are those visitors important to each of your businesses, and how, what percentage of your business is visitor versus the local? Okay. <laughs> you ready? I mean, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> so visitors are basically our lifeblood. Um, and so while we, we put about, in terms of just volume of spirit sold, you know, we, we sell... Uh, almost three times as much in distribution as we do out of our, our gift shop at the distillery, but we make, you know, three times as much um, on there, just so you know, that bottle of spirits that you buy at, at the package store, you know, is a, it's about 100% markup over what the manufacturer sells it for, um, which is kind of crazy. So, you know, if it weren't for visitors that visit the distillery, do tours, do tastings, buy bottles at our shop, we wouldn't be here. You know, so to get started in a, a business that requires aging stuff for years, um, you, you've got to tread water for a long time, um, about four years, as a matter <laughs> of fact. Um, and so if it weren't for visitors, if it wasn't for the help of Ellie and Homestead Manor and Gray's, where people can come to, um, Williamson County, see the Civil War sites, you know, pick up information, go get a bite to eat, tour our distillery, grab a cocktail uh, with our stuff in it, you know, at the end of the day uh, on down, in downtown Franklin, we wouldn't be here. So it, it is absolutely imperative uh, for our model that we um, continue to grow visitors and, and, and expand hospitality beyond um, our four walls. Great. Andy? Yeah, so um, for, for Puckett's, I, I'm harking all the way back to when we started in Leapers Fork. Um, the business model didn't, didn't work if you just relied on the, at that time, the 300, 350 households in Leapers Fork to support a business. We had to figure a way to bring people outside of the community to support, support you. So we've known from the very beginning that tourism was important. So we, we coached to it. We coached uh, a mentality of um, that you please the locals to get the attention of the tourist. So um, when a fireman is stopped or a policeman is stopped, someone trusted on the street and a visitor says, hey, we're from Canada and we're looking for somewhere local. Well, you want to be first on their mind. You want to be, you want to represent what's local. So our strategy has always been represent what's local, please the locals to attract the tourist. So um, our tourism numbers have grown over the years as we've gotten more and more attention um, for um, more nationally than, than locally. And so as we first started, uh, you know, we'd say we were about 95, five you know, locals to, to tourists. <laughs> and now our numbers in Franklin alone, we're about 60-40, uh, about 60, 40, 60 locals to 40% uh, uh, visitors, which is a huge change yeah. over the last five years, particularly. Mm -hmm. And certainly in the last 10 years, we've seen it go from virtually almost very few visitors to, to a tremendous amount of visitors. So it's okay. a big part of our business now. Great. Joni, anything to add? No. Y'all said it good. Okay, good. We've got it covered. So 
One of the things that we talk a lot about in our office, because you know our job day in and day out is to promote to that visitor, whether it's through group travel like meetings and conventions, or whether it's the leisure traveler, I'm coming with my family or my girlfriend or whomever. And all three of you have talked about growth, right? Just even in your introduction about growth. And as we know, growth is happening all around the county, all over Franklin and so forth. So we talk a lot in the office, how do we keep that authentic Williamson County experience that we all love and part of the reason that maybe some of us even moved here um, as we grow. So for you all, you know, um, you guys are all over the county. You know, Heath, you're out in Thompson Station. You are literally everywhere and you're, you're growing in the space on Main Street. So how do you keep that authentic experience for those residents and visitors while you expand your business? I'll go first this time. So um, for us, we, co we coach to a culture, right? So the, your biggest fear when you grow is, is that you outgrow your culture and your culture change who you are. And it's probably the number one warning that, that we've had on the front of our mind is if it doesn't matter how many restaurants we have, if our culture can't stay the same, then what's the purpose? So we coach to a culture, and that culture is always going to be to uh, have our locals in mind, knowing that if we please the locals, the tourists will find us. Even when we went to downtown Nashville, when we were choosing a location in downtown Nashville six years ago, <laughs> I think it was, you know, um, the real estate people kept pulling us down to Broadway saying, no, you need to be down here, you need to be down here. And it was way before the, the movement, or it was in the middle of the movement, really. But I, I said, you know, I was afraid if I was on Broadway, it would change our culture we would become all about the tourists and not about the locals. So we chose up on Fifth and Church, uh, and, and the very reason was, was there was a community growing around Church Street. And we knew if we could build around a community, the tourists were gonna come find us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been very successful because every time I try to get in that pocket, I can't. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah, Joni? Um, I, that's so true, and I'd like to add to that is um, you mentor and train your people to be like the head, and so it, it is a culture, and that's what Michael and I do. We have two two restaurants, so we're able to be on staff and be there every day. But if we grow to beyond that, you want to hire folks that have a spirit of hospitality, that are team players, um, that really know what it's like to be a servant, um, and you train and you mentor that way, so that when you're not there, they're representing you because you're not going to be able to be there all the time. So you really want them to represent you. Do we make mistakes? Absolutely. Um, do we hire people that we shouldn't? We do, but we make sure that you know we we want the very best, the cream of the crop. And you you know, I think those two things you cannot teach. You cannot teach to be a team player, and you really cannot teach to be a servant. They're born within, and the Lord will show you who those people are. I think the hardest thing is to in keeping your eye on the ball in terms of branding is figuring out which signals to ignore and which ones to learn from. Um, and so we've rooted our brand in place, um, not just dirt, but the locality. You know, what, who are we? Is, you know, what, is, um, what do our neighbors act like? You know, we're, are we welcoming? Do we open the door? Do we make time for everyone that walks in, even when we're busy? Um, and that's the culture, you know. And, you know, we're, we're at an inflection point with our business where, man, it, it's, it's really hard for Travis, our distiller, if you've been to the shop and met Travis, and he does a fantastic job every day, you know, but the culture is, well, Travis, you stop what you're doing and you take care of guests if, if I'm unavailable or, or whatever's going on. Um, it's getting harder to do, mainly because we're having a lot more visitors come through as we grow, and Travis, I've got some pressures on Travis to grow our, our production and so we're exactly at that inflection point and you know Becky and I spent a lot of time just revisiting you know what the core ethics are and making sure we communicate those um, and it's really coming down to me because I'm not good at that I just you know I just sort of go um, and I don't spend a lot of time in commun you know explaining myself which is not good and so I've had to <laughs> learn to take a step back and communicate why we're doing things and not just, you know, 
here's A, B, and C, but communicate them in the, the language of our brand culture. Um, and so it's, it's, it's just constant challenge and a constant, um, you gotta be willing to learn and not be um, so stubborn. You gotta be stubborn enough to get things done, but not so stubborn to um, do them incorrectly and sort of you know, blow up what you got in the process. Great. Okay, this is for Andy and Joni. Talk a little bit about the food scene and how do you stay competitive and appealing? Because, you know, if you, all over town, restaurants are opening. All over the county, restaurants are opening. More restaurants are getting reopened in downtown Franklin. So how do you stay competitive in that landscape and true to yourself at the same time? Well, uh, I support all of our restaurants in downtown Franklin. They're dear friends of ours. We send people there. Uh, the more, we want to be a location, so we want to have really amazing, wonderful restaurants. One of the things that Michael and I do is we travel a lot, we read a lot, we research a lot, we see what the trends are, we see if those trends fit who we are. We're just not gonna do a trend. We wanna make sure that it fits who we are, who our mission is, the space that we have. Can we do this consistently and uh, produce an amazing um, product but if you don't get out there and see what everybody else is doing then you don't realize what the trends are that's with food and with the, our bar program as well we want to make sure we're always on the cutting edge but we do want to make sure that we're doing this with the spirit of excellence and um, eye for detail we want to make sure that uh, we are giving out the best quality that we can the best service that we can but it is a lot about research and sharing that research with people and then supporting everybody in your downtown area yeah, so the, the food culture in Franklin has changed. I mean, even the Nashville region, you know, 10 years ago, we would not have been known as a, a food city. Um, we had um, some great local restaurants and we had lots of chains. So the local restaurants weren't getting near the recognition they deserved. But really over the last 10 years, you've seen a movement of more chef-driven restaurants, more um, owner-driven restaurants that have thrived in our market, and so we've become a food um, town. Well, with those people that come to our town from Chicago, New York, or Atlanta, or different places to plant in Nashville area or in Franklin area, it, uh, it brings a different, different flavors, different tastes. So we've seen a lot of change over the last 10 years. In the last five years, we've been accelerated, particularly the Nashville region. So um, for us as a company, uh, we've always um, focused on trends. We wanted to, to be on trend or, a, or right in front of a trend is the best place to be <laughs> than, than a year or two behind it. So um, we do trends tours. Some of you follow me on Facebook and you, you comment on, on our, our trends tours that we take. But we take our chefs and uh, some selected associates around the country to different place every year. And the specific reason is, is to find out what's on trend. So we'll go to some um, real institutional restaurants that have, that have proven for years and years and years they're doing something great. We go there to see, has anything changed? What are they doing to keep up? Or are they just doing the same thing that they did 15, 20 years ago and living on a reputation? So, um, and the other aspect is, is we look at restaurants that have opened in the last two years. So our, our biggest trend areas come out of Chicago. New York is the first place. Chicago is the second place trends really start showing up. And then LA, um, Miami. And so um, we spent a lot of time over the years going to Chicago, New York. Uh, we've been to Charleston. We've been to Austin. This year we went to New Orleans. And so we just study what's, what's new and what's exciting. And it also is a great motivation for my chefs. It, it keeps their creativity uh, stirring. And we keep changing our, our, um, our menus. So um, I've always believed if, if you don't stay on trend that, that you're going to hit a peak and you're going to start dying. So. Uh, we, you know, Puckett's has been alive now for, I don't know, 20 years now. So, uh, but if you looked at the menu that I put together 20 years ago, and you look <laughs> at the menu that is done today, and how it's progressed over that time, you can see I've surrounded myself with better talent that could continue to grow that menu, and a lot of it's results of these food tours. Yeah. 
So I'm still waiting on my invitation for the one on desserts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, desserts right. always. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Heath, I'm coming back to you. And this is going to be a little bit long, but hang with me because there's a couple things I'd like you to cover. Um, one, the distilling industry, I mean, how many distilleries are there now? Well, how many distilleries are part of the new Whiskey Trail? There are 28. 28, okay. So how do you stand out among that crowd? And how do you stand out knowing that we're an hour and a half from Jack Daniels, you know, probably the biggest in the state? So it's um, figuring out how to stand out or be in the way uh, <laughs> is really a couple ways to think about it. And so, you know, being uh, sort of between Nashville and Jack Daniels is, is good for us uh, because there are a lot of uh, visitors to Nashville who may not have all day to go to Lynchburg, but they got an afternoon, they got three hours, and so you can hop on the Tennessee Whiskey Tours or Mint Julep and, you know, come see us, come see Leapers Fort, get back to Nashville and, 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 and sort of get your experience. Um, the, the flip side is also, so that's just sort of happenstance, right? So, okay, we want to be in the way, let's do that. Uh, the, the, the second part in standing out is understanding the mythology of whiskey um, you know the the distilleries that are most successful man these things are humongous um, Jack Daniels is is they make 60 million gallons of whiskey a year um, but the mythology is like some old boy in a barn, you know in the woods making whiskey <laughs> and so uh, you know the, the the scale is is incredibly different just for example we make a barrel of whiskey a week one Jack Daniels fills up 2,400 a day. Um, so the scale and the, 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 just the machine to get that done is enormous. You know, uh, Buffalo Trace, you know, they, those guys have 90,000 gallon fermenters. Uh, I, think, I mean, that's humongous. And so the way we've stood out was thinking about the mythology of whiskey knowing what our limitations were from a capital startup standpoint, from a, um, you know, how are we going to get people to come here standpoint. And so we've built our experience to be consistent with the mythology of whiskey. So we put our distillery in an old barn in a small town that wasn't too far away. You know, so the, the slogan at Thompson Station is uh, uh, close to everything but away from it all. So you're two miles off the freeway, but you feel like you're on another planet. Um, and so by rooting it in a place that felt like a place you ought to make whiskey and putting the small distillery in a place that looked like a place you ought to make whiskey, um, that's how we stood out. Now, you got to make great products. I feel like ours are, we've, we've achieved that part of the goal. You know, you can trick somebody into buying something once, but our business is really at this point repeat customers um, and people traveling from California because they heard we have good gin. I mean, that's just crazy. Um, but it starts with setting the tone and sort of playing the part and building, you know, building our experience to, to, to look like what people expect um, when they come to Tennessee. So Heath is part of the Tennessee Whiskey Guild. He's a member of the Tennessee Whiskey Guild. And two years ago, he came to us and he said they want to start a whiskey trail like the Bourbon Trail in Kentucky. This is why good partners are really important. So he convinced the Tennessee Whiskey Trail that the headquarters or the home base of that trail should be Franklin, Tennessee. So we actually did the kickoff of the Whiskey Trail from Franklin, from the factory. Um, so talk about two years later, now that that trail's been kicked off, how many visitors and that economic impact of the Whiskey Trail? Uh, it's, it's been crazy. Um, so we've, we just had our first, we're about 18 months into the to Tennessee Whiskey Trail. Um, we had over 6 million visitors to Tennessee distilleries last year. 6 million, isn't that crazy? Um, just crazy. Um, so, <laughs> and in the first year out of the gate as a product, a tourism product for the state of Tennessee, Tennessee Whiskey Trail was a, a top 20 attraction for the state of Tennessee. So that's Dollywood, that's Graceland, that's the Grand Ole Opry, that's the Smoky Mountains. And then you've got this really very brand new, largely volunteer, you know, we got a little funding from the state to get started, but it's really the effort of uh, members of the guild, you know, from Jack Daniels to folks our size that get involved and drive it. And so the economic impact, I think we were a four and a half billion dollar 
industry. So, you know, 55% of our nation's spirit exports come from Tennessee. That's Jack Daniels, George Dickel, uh, Old Smokey now getting in the game. 55%. So we, you know, we're a humongous part of the national spirits um, sort of conversation despite a lot of the attention that goes to Kentucky. And so being able to harness the good name of Jack Daniels, frankly, um, has been, allowed us to you know, you know, tap into this um, whiskey culture that's all across the state. Right. And Leapers Fork Distillery is part of that as well. That's right. So we have two yeah. member so have two. distilleries in, in Williamson County, which is, is fantastic. So um, that's another sort of reason that it's helped us a lot when yeah. Leapers Fork got started, because now it's a sort of a, you can sort of do that in a day. It's an easier sell. Hey, we need to go see two distilleries and a winery than it was. Hey, let's go see one distillery in Williamson County. So oh, it helps absolutely. a lot. So I have more questions, but do you, does anyone in the audience have questions? Because I'm happy to take a break. Any questions? If not, we'll keep going with my list. OK. Don't feel shy to raise your hand, though, if something comes up. So going back to marketing and strate marketing strategy and approach, and Andy, you mentioned this a little bit about just the national exposure we're now getting, uh, which has been a big thing that we've worked on as well. And Matt Maxey and Lauren Ward from my staff are here. Raise your hands. There you go. Um, from our marketing team. And Matt handles all of our public relations. But So talk a little bit about your marketing strategy and approach um, just to you know, get folks into your, into your restaurants and into your distillery. You know, our, our marketing strategy, and you know, Becky could answer that a little bit better than me um, in terms of strategy and approach, but the macro was knowing our limitations. You know, we can't really afford billboards um, or, you know, Southern Living ads. So part of our strategy was to basically be part of the infrastructure of whiskey in Tennessee. Uh, so that's Whiskey Trail, that's Masters and Makers. Um, the second thing, and, and the unsung heroes for probably us at Leaper's Fork is, is, is Maxi. I mean, Matt, <laughs> we, we punch way above our weight from a, from a national press standpoint because Matt and Ellie and the CVB does a phenomenal job of getting people here to, to see Williamson County. It's, it's incredible, you know, from, you know, um, all the travel sites that, you know, people are going to Jack Daniels and H. Clark and Leaper's Fork. I mean, it's, that's good. It's crazy, and it's because of the CVB. So um, maintaining, you know, always being available for CVB uh, is, is frankly part of our marketing strategy. They do so much for us. Um, we're going to do everything we can to help them out outside the distillery. Um, so it's not just selfish for us, but how do we, how do we build the whole, the whole basket for um, And so we spend a lot of time just thinking outside the box, outside the distillery, how do we get more people to Puckets? How do we get more people to Carton? How do we get more people to you know, go from spend an afternoon in Franklin to spend the night in Franklin? And so uh, that's our strategy. Great. Yeah, you know, coattail on Nashville, right? Right. If, they, if they're going to stay three days in Nashville, why not stay two in Franklin, too, and make it a week? So, uh, we, And we've been really successful with that. Um, <laughs> Thanks to our CVB. Um, Sally Mink, where's Sally? Sally, this is our marketing director, so a lot of what I say I'll take credit for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Sally will be sitting over there thinking, well, I thought of that, I did that. <laughs> um, but um, if, if we go, um, you think of strategies, there's really so many multifacets to it, it's not one answer. I wish it was one answer because then you could just really hyper focus, but it, it's really it's um, many different strategies. Um, in the early days, it was uh, focus on you know the quality of our menu, our service, and the experience. And if we can bundle all three, I, I would tell our associates if we can bundle all three of those things together and not just limp along with one or two of those working for us. But if you can make all three work for you, that you that experience is what um, drives people to talk about you. Um, good food will do it to some level. Good service will do it to some level. But if you deliver an experience, then the chatter really begins. So we focused on let's deliver an experience. You know, even in Leapers Fork, when it was you know the little restaurant that could. Um, but as we've grown, we've stayed focused on, on that aspect. But then it's also about social media. 
And, and it's about um, saying yes to a CVB or a, a travel group that, that calls you and say, hey, would you host? It's, it's a matter of, of being a yes company and saying, absolutely. Because a strange thing happens when they, they're hosting people and they bring them to your place, even though the article may be on a completely different subject than restaurants, somebody there will have an experience and you'll end up in a German magazine or you'll end up on the London Times that we ended up once and or USA Today or, or New York Times and all these things um, become bigger than who you are. And when your image becomes bigger than who you are, you go open another restaurant. Uh, <laughs> But, but that's really what happened to us. As is, is, is hard as we worked on the locals, when, um, when a writer writes about you in, in USA Today or in Glamour Magazine or in um, Bon Appetit, if you get something that's national in structure, then all of a sudden the locals seem to appreciate you even more. And sometimes it just takes that kind of recognition to, for it to happen. Absolutely. I agree with all of that. So you've been in the business how long? 20 years, and Michael and I have been in the business five years, and we saw very quickly that it is about the experience, the atmosphere, and about the quality of the food, and you do have to bundle all that up, and you have to keep that 100% no matter what you do. Uh, we've been super blessed to have the gray sign. That's great marketing, great promoting. Uh, we now own the building, and we don't, we've don't. we been blessed that we haven't had to spend a lot of marketing dollars because of the sign, because it's in every single picture of downtown Franklin, um, which is great. We love that. Oh, be joyful is a little... Another little story, but uh, yeah, but Gray's is amazing. And we are as well are a yes company. And I think when you're thinking about what everything we're talking about here, you can say one word and it's about relationship. And it's about when, you know, the, these guys call me, like you say, then you do end up in Garden and Gun or Bon Appetit or some big uh, uh, blogger that's got a million people following her will say something and so that's amazing that's wonderful and it is because of the downtown Franklin it's also all of this raises our level of hospitality so with Franklin locals and with our restaurants it's about raising our level of hospitality the power of hospitality on the streets and it starts with core people and then we extend it out to everybody else and we form relationships absolutely okay for. For you may. <laughs> Bob Stewart. Andy, how would you describe the difference between your two Franklin restaurants, the Boathouse versus the Grocery? Thanks, Bob. Um, you know, I, I think there was there's some um, connection there because we put Puckett's Grocery and Restaurant and Puckett's Boathouse. Uh, both of them um, uh, kind of specialize in an elevated um, comfort food area. Um, for the Boathouse, obviously, we wanted to try to drive the memories of the uh, 30A, the, the coastal uh, seafood that so many of us traveled when we were growing up, going down to Panama City or, or Seaside and things like that. So that, that was the whole um, strategy behind the Boathouse. For Puckett's, it's the Mojo Triangle. It's Memphis, Nashville, New Orleans. That's our wheelhouse, and that's what we coach our, our chefs to stay within that wheelhouse of those flavors. So it's Southern Comfort, and then Boathouse is Southern Seafood Comfort. Great. Good question. Thanks. Okay, I'm like, I'm wrapping, Minnie's like, wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> so a couple things before I wrap it up. Um, one, two years ago, quite a few of us and a lot of people in this room worked really closely with Columbia State. Ken Daniel is here. Ken, raise your hand if you don't mind. There's Ken Daniel. And we created a hospitality program because we, well, personally, I've spent my whole career in hospitality and tourism. I think it's a great place to be. And we wanted to make sure that our students in Williamson County knew that was a, a career, that could be a career path for them as well. So we worked really closely with Columbia State. We have a hospitality program there. So if you know of kids, if you speak to the high schools, marketing, culinary, any of those areas, if they have interests, send them over to Ken and he'll definitely get them information. As you heard a lot, we work very closely with all three here, but really across, you know, we, we tease in our office, we're the sales and marketing arm of the county. What we do is we promote the county, but we don't own anything, right? So it's so important, like you said, Joni, to have these relationships. And we just completely remarketed, rebranded all of our creative. So if you go to our website, you're gonna see a new website. And back on that table out front, 
you can pick up one of these cards. We ask you if you have a business on our website to go in and update your listing. If you don't have a business, if your business isn't on our website, but it is a visitor friendly business, get listed. So you can pick up this card and it just tells you how you can um, get your business on our website to promote to the visitors that are coming in. And of course, locals use our website as well. And then the very last thing, um, Matt actually brought a t-shirt for us to give away with some of our new uh, branding on it. So by show of, raise your hand, how many visitors did we have in 2017? Oh man, raise your hand. I couldn't remember. Okay, Alan, you can get our new Franklin t-shirt, hashtag Franklin t-shirt. So. Thank you all for being here this morning and being on the panel. I appreciate it. Please thank our panel for, for, them, for their participation. Um, I, think, I think the basis, one of the things we need to remember about the Franklin locals and about the job that these people are doing is we are all in our community also. The best thing you can do, you're walking down Main Street, say hi to somebody. They're stunned when someone in our community sure. says, Hey, good morning. <laughs> Have a great day. Can, or they're standing there. Ask them, can you help them? The visitor center is on 4th Avenue across from the Franklin Mercantile, big blue awning. You can't miss it. If you know nothing else, know how to send them to the visitor center. But be what Franklin is, which is a friendly community. And you can do that by participating. That's, that's easy. You, I'd love to do the programs, but may not have time but you can always be friendly in our community and we would ask you to do that. Um, so just some ways you can support Franklin tomorrow. A great way is to show your civic pride. How many people have a historic Franklin license plate on the back of their car? Great way to show your pride in our community and we'd love for you to do that. Um, you can also select Franklin tomorrow as your Amazon smile. If you shop locally but also online you can choose Franklin tomorrow as your Amazon nonprofit of choice and we will benefit from your purchases we cannot remind you enough that we invite you to participate on October 30th or the days surrounding it in our on the table program you can learn more by going to our website franklintomorrow.org backslash on the table and we have a special message for you about that we know that big ideas can spring from small conversations, which is why I am inviting you to participate in a community engagement project called On the Table. On Tuesday, October the 30th, participants will gather in small groups across the city to discuss and share their ideas for making our community stronger and more connected. Let your voice be heard and reserve your seat at the table for on the table, together, we can make a difference. Thank you, Mayor Moore, but also thank you to the City Communications Department for all they do. Uh, they are recording this today, and it'll be rebroadcast on the City Channel and then on our um, website as well if you want to share it with someone. But thank you for being here, and remember, we'll be back on the second Monday of November, but don't miss Breakfast with the Mayors and On the Table on October 30th. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.